Hello again everyone, this is Chris Shira, that's Robert Harding, and after a lengthy delay, this is finally the Citizen Sports Weekly <laughs> for Thursday, May 7th, 2015. The, Sorry. The word of the day is patience. Yes, the word of the day is patience, and unfortunately I had to get some reference material together and I kept Robert waiting, so I apologize, Robert, for keeping you waiting because your time is precious and valuable, so, you know, hey. Senator Chuck Schumer could call him at any time. I'm telling you, it's happened before. I've seen it. It could, it could literally. He's seen it. With the exception of maybe the president of the United States, I could see almost any any politician calling Robert at any time about something. Joe Biden would call Robert since there's an Auburn connection. Hmm. So, Interesting. all right. So we're going to talk about a couple sports topics, and the first one is off my column that is in today's edition of the Citizen. It's also available on AuburnPub.com. Uh, you can check it out there. And basically the column says that, you know, the Syracuse Chiefs, the Auburn Double Days, um, two, two of our minor league baseball teams here in, in central New York, let's have a little fun during the summertime. Let's play games. Let's play ball in the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University. Let's play real, honest-to-goodness baseball, the national pastime, in the Carrier Dome. And I thought it was a great idea. I, I even coined the term doubleheader at the dome or dome doubleheader, you know. And uh, I just thought that was a, a really super cool idea. And, uh, I, I mean, you couldn't do it this year because I don't think there's enough time to, to, you know, for the logistics and planning and everything. But, you know, maybe for 2016, I think it would be a great idea to play some baseball at the dome. I mean, yeah, you have to make some modifications to the facility. Uh, you have to bring in an infield, which they bring in dirt for monster trucks. And then there's the whole idea of how you're going to have the diamond structured out. And, um, you know, maybe you do it in the corner uh, at, where home plate would be. And then so that way, uh, you know, left field would, would be pretty far out, but right field would be pretty close in maybe, maybe even too close. Or maybe put it uh, in the end zone and do it out that way. It, it would be kind of tricky, I, you know, but I think if you maybe put up what I would call the orange monster, like a tarp, like a 50-foot high tarp or something uh, to, you know, to keep balls in the ballpark that aren't really hit that deep. Uh, I think it could be done. I mean, I, like I said, it would be difficult, I give you that, but I think it could be done, and I think it would be kind of fun. And, and, you know, this is the minor leagues, and the games are supposed to be fun. I mean, yes, the, the players take them seriously, which they should, but, you know, the, the but minor leagues are about, you know, enjoying baseball during the summertime, and I think it would be fun. I think it would be great for the Chiefs and the Double Days and, you know, Let's see what happens. Maybe maybe we could pull this one off. It's crazy. It's far fetched, but I love it. All right. I love it. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's it's the kind of gimmick we've gotten used to in Central New yeah. York. You know. I mean. Frozen dome. Yeah. The, the crunch. Let's just preface it. If you now we have the orange right. monster. Right. I mean. The possibilities are endless. Yeah, I mean, the Syracuse Crunch American Hockey League team, minor league hockey, they played a game at the Dome in November. They drew 30,000 people. Obviously, the hockey's different because of the, you know, the arena the arena being set up for being able to put a rink in. Baseball's a lot more difficult. But, no, I, I think it could work. I think it, it, you'd have to do some things, but it, it, you could pull it off. So, And I appreciate your support, Robert. That I have to admit, I didn't think you were going to like it. I thought maybe you were going to shoot it down. No, I, you know, I, I think... Uh... One of the challenges in Central New York with both the Chiefs and the Double Days has been uh, getting people to, mm -hmm. you know, to the park. You know, the Chiefs have had that challenge over the years. The Double Days have had that challenge yeah. in recent years. Um, you know, it's it's a real issue. You know, especially in the financial yeah. bottom line yeah. of things, and uh, especially for you know minor league markets like Auburn and Syracuse. So, you know. What better way to yeah. kind of draw attention, yeah. not only to, you know, one team, but to both yeah. Central New York Double header, teams. you know, that's what I mean. You have two yeah. games for the price of one. And you know who threw out the first pitch? Jim Beheim. Jim Beheim. I think that'd even be cooler. You know, you could have Jim Beheim throw out the first pitch. I think that'd be kind of awesome. You wouldn't have a, a famous name in Central New York baseball throw out the first pitch. Well, that's tough because, I mean, I, I think of uh, players that have played at LeMoyne, like Tom Browning. Uh, who pitched a perfect game for the Reds? Uh, Jim Deshays, who, uh, who was in the Yankees minor league organization, then got shipped out to Houston and was a halfway decent pitcher there. Um, our own Kevin Polkovich, who's from Auburn, who played for the Pirates back in 97, 98. Um, but I think you'd have to have Beheim. I think you'd have to have Beheim connect to this somehow because I think obviously people like to see Jim 
and I think they'd like to come out and maybe see him throughout the first pitch. I think it'd be kind of cool. Either that or a football player or something, you know. Hmm. You know. So, but um, it would be difficult. Syracuse, obviously, the university would have to sign off on it because it is their building and they have to get permission. But I think that, you know, you'd have to pay them, you know, give them a cut of the concessions or maybe the, the gate or something. And, and, you know, I think and the dome's not being used anyways in June or July, really. I mean, uh, it's pretty empty there. I'm sure they're just getting it ready for football. Um, but it doesn't take long to really get an artificial turf field ready to play football on it. But, um, you know, I think it'd be kind of cool. You know, I think it'd be kind of fun. And, and really, it's like I said, minor league baseball is about having fun. And I think this would be a cool idea. And uh, who knows, maybe next year, maybe it can happen. Maybe Jason Smorrell, the, the GM of the uh, Syracuse Chiefs, and Mike Vecinas, who's the Double Days uh, general manager, maybe these guys can get together and talk to Syracuse University and put this thing going, get this thing going, and, and put, let's put it on for and play ball in the Dome next year. You ready to talk uh, draft? I'm ready to talk draft. The NFL, the season that never ends. Now we can, dis now we can dissect the draft because it's over with. So, Robert, I'll let you go first. Can you just give me your overall impressions of how you thought the Bills did with their draft? I wasn't a fan. I, I didn't like, uh, you know, they, they had to wait, mm. of course, to the second yeah. round. Uh, they used uh, that pick on a cornerback, uh, Ronald Darby, out of Florida State. Uh, not a fan of the pick, uh, not a fan of the position. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought they needed to go linebacker or offensive line there. They didn't. They did go offensive line in the third round. John Miller, who I thought yeah. was the best pick, uh, offensive guard, I believe, out of Louisville. Uh, he's going to be a beast, mm -hmm. and I think you know he's a guy that could come in right away and uh, start or contribute for the Bills. Uh, then you get into, you know, there wasn't a fourth-round pick. There was a fifth-round pick. Uh, they <clears throat> they took, uh, trying to draw a blank now. See? See, I, I can't, I hate to say this, but I can't memorize <laughs> every took, single pick They took here. Carlos Williams, the running yeah. back out of Florida State, who, again, you know, this, uh, this yeah. isn't a position of need for the Bills. Uh, you know, and then you get into the character issues. He has, you know, uh, he was accused of domestic violence. Uh, he uh, was supposedly linked to a drug deal, uh, and that's not you know what you want when you Google your new no, back's name. No, not at all. Uh, in the sixth round, they took a linebacker, Tony Stewart, I believe, out of Clemson, more of a special teamer type player. Um, you know, he might be able to contribute as a reserve linebacker, mm -hmm. but really nothing beyond that. Uh, I know in the seventh round they took a wide receiver who. Probably won't end up on a team, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, right. They also drafted uh, the other, the last pick, uh, tight end Nick O'Leary, Jack Nicholas's mm -hmm. uh, grandson. Mm -hmm. So, but also a a, a very good tight end. Um, might not be a good uh, number one tight end in the NFL, but certainly capable of contributing as a blocking tight end, special teams kind of player. Yeah. So, you know, overall, Bills draft uh, was uh, underwhelming. Uh, you know, I think really out of these guys, Miller will be able to come in and contribute. The rest, uh, I see more in reserve roles. So, you know, I th you know I wrote the report card on yeah. this. I didn't give uh, too many good grades in that. But, you know, the Miller pick, to me, was the most important yeah. one, bolstering that offensive line, which, of course, is a need for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, for the Dolphins, you know, we talk, I talked about Devontae Parker last week when they made the pick, and I was thrilled with it. Still am. Uh, the second-round pick was kind of a surprise. They picked Jordan Phillips, the defensive tackle out of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, a guy that I guess has first-round talent but unfortunately does not have first-round, um, you know, motivation, I guess is the way to describe it. So uh, I'm hoping that maybe now he's getting paid to play uh, football. That might help out. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. That's a project. Obviously, uh, in the AFC East, your defensive line can't be strong enough. You can't get enough pressure on Tom Brady, obviously. So I, I, you could say that was a little bit of a reach, you know, more of like just filling out a need, maybe the best athlete available. Uh, the next round, uh, they picked a, a guard out of Arizona State, uh, Jamil Douglas. You know, hey, look, you know, they needed offensive linemen, and, you know, I guess they probably thought this was the best guy available in the, in the fourth round here. They didn't have a third-round pick. They traded it for Kenny Stills from the Saints. So you're, you're filling need. Fifth round, uh, they, they need depth in the defensive backfield. Bobby McCain, the cornerback out of Memphis. Again, you just don't know how this guy's going to do. I mean, you know, when you're picking uh, cornerbacks and, and, and safeties uh, this late, there's no sure things. Um, worse comes worse, he's a special teams player, so... 
And then um, the fifth round, the other fifth round pick the Dolphins had, this was a surprise pick, and I guess a lot of people love this. They say there's great value in this pick, is uh, Jay Ajay, uh, Ajay, Jay Ajay, I believe, out of Boise State. Great name. And this guy uh, was a stud, had a knee injury. Uh, they don't know how long his knee's going to last, supposedly, but I like it. I think that Lamar Miller had a great year last year, but can't help. They have a little competition. Maybe this guy's a good third down back, you know, you throw it to him out of the backfield, see what he can make happen. Uh, I, I like that. I think that's taking a chance, and there's nothing wrong with taking a chance in the fifth round. So, um, you know, it, overall, not bad. And the last pick, I believe, was uh, Cedric Thompson. No, I'm sorry. The second to last pick, Cedric Thompson, a safety out of Minnesota, again, addressing the defensive backfield. And, again, the same thing I said about the other pick. And then the last one, uh, Tony Lippett, who actually is a wide receiver, but who they're going to play at cornerback out of Michigan State. Um, again, it looks like they're, they're drafting for needs, which is, I guess you consider successful. Uh, the Phillips pick, I think best athlete available, could, could be a real winner for you. Obviously, the Dolphins did not get um, Lyle, Lyle uh, um, uh, brought a blank on his last name. The guy of the Cowboys just signed. Oh, Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins, I'm sorry. I could not think of Collins for a second there. Sorry about that. Uh, that would have been great if they could have got him, but obviously Jerry Jones uh, did something. Um, maybe poisoned him. No, just kidding. Hypnotized him. No, 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 I don't think so. No, he didn't do anything wrong. Uh, and, uh, and and that would have been great if the Dolphins could have got him because I still think Miami's biggest uh, needs are the guards uh, on the offensive line. Uh, but, you know, they they're, they got some players here. We'll see what happens. Um, I, I love what they did with the wide receivers. That you know, so I think if you have to give the Dolphins off season a grade, it, it's 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 a B plus A minus. Um, I, I think they really addressed some needs. They got rid of some dead wood, opened up some cap space, and um, you know they're doing the right things. But you know the thing is, when it all comes down to, is that um, Tannehill has got to play better this year. He played better last year. He's made progress each year. This year, he's really got to take it up to the next step. I'm saying he's got to throw at least 30 touchdowns and at least 4,000 yards. He hit over 4,000 last year, uh, but he has to do that, but he has to get more touchdowns. I mean, he had 27 last year, 12 interceptions. Good numbers, really. I know Robert would take him with the Bills, but he's got to go above 30. And uh, the fact that they got rid of Mike Wallace, uh, they're bringing more receivers that are better with his lack of accuracy, and uh, Tannehill's just got to step it up. And I think that if he plays – as he's capable of playing and continues to progress, uh, that he might be able to get the Dolphins to nine to ten wins, which maybe enough to get to the playoffs. We'll we'll see what happens. So, I like the uh, uh, the running back pick in the fifth round. Yeah, uh, fifth round, I believe. Yeah, it was. fifth round. They had three um, fifth round picks. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, they, you know, that pick, uh, you know, just generally, yeah. you know, there there is as you know, uh, Washington learned this a few years yeah. ago with uh, Alfred Morris. That you know there, <laughs> there is good talent to be had yes. in the later rounds, yeah. and especially at running back, if you have yep. a good offensive line ahead of him. So, yeah. you know, he he could turn out to be a guy who you know quietly yeah. puts together a thousand yard season. You know, maybe not this year, but you know down the road in a year or two. I, I'd like to see five hundred rushing and five hundred receiving, with about ten touchdowns. I think that'd be great if you could get that out of this guy. And I have a feeling you're going to draft him on your fantasy football team. Mm, I don't think so. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the preseason. I guess you might know, be but. might be an early, you know, week two, week yeah, three pickup. Right. If right. uh, we'll you know, it depends on how you yeah. know what what he, what role he yeah. establishes. Yeah. If the Dolphins just right. treat him as a rookie and yeah. he's nothing more than a you know change of pace guy who they bring in every uh, every now and then, then yes. you know you don't want him on your team. But yeah. you know if he's going to be a contributor, that's a different story. Yeah. Anything else you want to add, sir? No, no. We're gonna NFL draft is done. We're gonna I know Deflate Gate. I we, I was just gonna say we didn't discuss it. We're not. I think this should be a Deflate Gate free, yeah, video. So we're not gonna talk about. It. So yeah. that's it, folks. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. To my uh, fellow Dolphin fans out there that uh, maybe on that Facebook page, the Miami Dolphins number one Facebook page there, they're maybe watching this. I am with you, my brothers and sisters. Look at this. Look at this phone case. Yeah, I got this phone case. This is pretty cool. I, it's not a I, Dolphins case. It's not a Dolphins case, but, but the color. The colors, man. The colors never lie. I just love the yeah. colors on this thing. And uh, it also shows the uh, time and temperature, too, which is pretty cool. But anyways, yeah, I bleed aqua and orange. But just this is just aqua. Should we cut you to test this? No, we're not going to cut you to test this. No, no. <laughs> Let's just say, you know. Figuratively. Figuratively, <laughs> I, I bleed aqua orange. So. Folks, thanks again for watching the video, and uh, if you like it, please um, share the link, and um, 
you know, continue to watch, subscribe, and uh, we appreciate your support, and we'll see you next week.